Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Nintendo Switch. This time I'm going to show you how to get the slime key as well as enter and navigate the key cavern. So first things first, uh, we are going to start from Bottle Grotto, but there's a lot of side questing that we have to do in order to even get the slime key. So first we're going to get 220 rupees, then we're going to begin the trading sequence up to the bananas. We're going to head to Canalet Castle and find the five golden leaves. And then we're going to speak with Richard in Pothole Field and finally get the slime key. And then we'll move into the dungeon. If you've already gotten the slime key and you've already started the dungeon, please check the video description for the timestamp for when the dungeon walkthrough begins. And I'll also be placing it on screen here. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is get at least 220 rupees. So to start us off with that, I'm just going to walk right back into Bottle Grotto. I'm going to open a chest that is only obtainable once you get the power bracelet in this dungeon. So this chest here contains 50 rupees. And then after we get this, our next stop is a cave inside of the mysterious forest that could not be reached without the power bracelet, or could not be entered without the power bracelet, rather. So that's our next stop. So we're just going to navigate through Gaponga Swamp here. Uh, we still have Bow Wow with us, and we are eventually going to return him to Madame Meow Meow. If you watched my previous walkthrough, you'll know that I'm going to do an all-hearts guide, so I'm just skipping all the heart pieces for now, and I'll come back to them. Uh, one of the really cool features in Link's Awakening on Switch is the ability to mark your map uh, with a lot of different icons, so I'll be marking heart pieces as I go. Uh, this is the cave that I mentioned here, so we're just going to head in here, and we are going to use the rock's feather at the very edge of this platform to jump over. Of course, I failed the first time, but that's okay. I'm going to get it on the second. Once you jump over, just hold forward, and Link will eke his way onto the ledge, and then just do the same thing coming back. And there you go. That's 100 rupees in like 30 seconds or something like that. So the last, uh, it, chances are right now you have uh, enough rupees, but I'm going to show you where to get an additional 50 just in case uh, you're running really low on rupees. Maybe you kind of got uh, scammed in, in the trendy game or something, and you know, I noticed that the physics in, in this trendy game and this game are, are pretty rough. Um, so yeah, but speaking of trendy game, we're going to go there soon. So we're going to head back to Mave Village, and we're going to return Bow Wow to Madam Meow Meow, and we're going to go get our next 50. So something that I'm noticing, I mean, this is going to be a bit of a long uh, trek with just a lot of walking, so I'm going to do a little bit of commentary, I guess. Uh, something that I'm noticing, and I'm playing on version 1.0.0, so version 1, like straight up version 1. Uh, the frame rate is, is pretty rough. Um, I really like this game. I think it's like a great, great reimagining, but the frame rate at times, especially when area names appear on screen, uh, it, it gets tough. Like, you can see the transition there. I mean, I feel like it's dropping way below 30 uh, in some sections, especially on the overworld. But, you know, what are you going to do? So our next 50 rupee is just east of the town and then in this cave right here. There is a hard piece here, and with the power bracelet, it is obtainable, but I'm going to skip it for now. I'm just focused on 50 rupees. So we're going to push this rock up. Push this next one, and very importantly, you want to kill these slimes before lifting up this skull. And then you want to push over, push over that rock, and then we're going to get our last 50. So that's 150 rupees in just a couple minutes. Uh, so by now, you should have at least 220. And the reason we need 220 is we need to play the trendy game at least once, and then we need to buy bombs as well as a shovel. So that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to begin the trading sequence by playing the trendy game. And if you remember this game from Link's Awakening it, uh, on Game Boy, it works very, very similarly, uh, except it's uh, the arrangement of items has been changed, but for the most part, it works the exact same. So the trendy game is in this uh, little building here. So we're going to talk to the trendy game master, and our objective here is to get the Yoshi doll. Um, if he, if, if your luck is, is, is a little low, I recommend getting the 50 rupee uh, before you leave, but... Yeah, we're going to get the Yoshi doll. Um, I have noticed that the physics on this are really, really annoying. And the Yoshi doll and anything else can actually fall out of the crane. And uh, we'll just like land. I've had it land on the edge of the conveyor belt. And uh, it becomes unobtainable. If that ever happens, just leave and come back. But I've had some really weird luck with the physics of this, of this crane game. And it happens on all different items. Uh, so just be very careful. If you feel like it's out of reach, you know, you feel like it drops and bounces out of reach, chances are it probably is. 
just leave the, the building, go back in, and it will reset. So coming out of the Trendy game, uh, one of the kids in the village will uh, notice that you've gotten a Yoshi doll and say that his mom has been dying to get one. So we're going to go give it to his mom, and then this is going to start off the trading sequence. So the mother is in this house here, which in the original was pretty bare, uh, but now there's like six beds in the house. Uh, there's a mom and dad, like they've got drawings all over the place. It, it looks like a lived-in house, which is one of the things that I love about this version of the game. But uh, trading the Yoshi doll gives you the ribbon, and now we're going to bring the ribbon to, I think its name is Chow Chow, uh, which is the tiny uh, chain chomp at Madame Meow Meow's house. So you got to go into the little dog house on the side, uh, just behind Bow Wow's post, and then you're going to talk to this mini chain chomp, and yes, yeah, Chow Chow. So you're going to give Chow Chow the ribbon, and then uh, Chow Chow is going to give you the dog food. And we're going to take the dog food to Sale in Sale's House of Bananas. So I always thought that the guy's name was Sal, but I guess not. I figured if, if his name was Sal, they would have fixed it in this version, but it's still Sale. So uh, that's where we're headed next. Sale's house is on the beach, and uh, you just want to navigate down to like the first, like probably like the northern section of Tarambo Shores. And then you're going to kill these Octoroks, and then this is Sal's house. Sales House of Bananas, right here. So next we're just going to talk to Sale, and then uh, he he's going to ask for the dog food. We're going to give him the dog food, and then we're going to get the bananas. And that's going to be it for the trading sequence for now, until we give the bananas to the NPC we need to. Uh, so next up, we're going to pay a visit to the item shop in May Village, and we're going to get the shovel and some bombs. So we got the bananas, now we can head back to Mave Village. Uh, if you're noticing how much walking around I'm having to do for this quest, uh, it is quite noticeable, and it, there is a lot of walking, but luckily the item in the next dungeon is the Pegasus Boots, so we'll be moving around the map a lot faster uh, after this dungeon. And this is actually one of the things that I really like about Link's Awakening, is the amount of side questing you have to do before each dungeon. I feel like it really gets you out in the world, it gets you interacting with NPCs, I wish more games did this these days. Um, it seems like a lot of games these days just go dungeon to dungeon to dungeon, and uh, they really don't want you to interact in the world that they build. Uh, so I'm just glad that this is the way it is. Um, so we're gonna head to the item shop up here. It's this building to the east of the weather vane. And then I'm gonna buy the shovel, and I'm actually gonna get two sets of bombs. So if you have some rupees left over, I recommend getting at least 20 bombs if you can. 10 is totally fine. I'll show you exactly where to place them. Uh, but the first few rooms in the key cavern, uh, bombs come in handy, so I recommend just getting 20 if you can. And of course, if you have another 200 rupees, go ahead and buy that hard piece. I'm, I'm just going to skip it for now. Uh, and then, so now we got the shovel and the bombs, we're going to head out, and now we're going to uh, navigate to the castle. So, optionally, you can head south from here, and uh, you can speak with Richard and get the quest, but you don't really need to. I'm going to activate this teleport platform first, and I'm actually going to show you where a brand new teleport location is. Uh, a bunch have been added in the Switch version, which is great. Uh, also keep note of this tree right here with the honeycomb. This is for the trading quest later, uh, so I'm just going to mark that on my map. And then you want to place a bomb on this big skull rock here, and then just back away, let it explode. And now we have access to the castle. So. Like I said before, you can go speak with Richard in Signpost Field, but you don't have to, um, so I'm just going to skip it. We're, we have to go talk to him anyway uh, after we get the five golden leaves, uh, so I'll just leave it for then. Uh, so these Moblins, they deal a lot of damage. Uh, they are stronger than the ones in the woods, uh, so just, just try to keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, as you can see, like one shot does, you know, one hit with the spear does a whole heart, uh, but that's it for them. And this right here, just take out your shovel and you're going to dig up a brand new warp spot right next to the seashell house. So you can see in the distance uh, a monkey waving at you. That's our next stop. And the monkey is asking for some bananas. And giving Kiki some bananas will uh, have him call his monkey friends over and they will build you a bridge to the castle. So uh, similar to Link to the Past, Kiki always wants something and uh, it actually winds up costing you twice the amount of rupees. In the Link to the Past it's 110, uh, but to 
effectively get to this spot, you need 220. I'm not sure if they did that on purpose, uh, but that's just the way it worked out. All right, so they're gonna do their little dance and then they're gonna leave behind a stick. And this is, uh, for the rest of the trading sequence, this, this is your next item. And you're actually gonna bring it to Terran at that tree with the honeycomb on it. Uh, but I'll cover that in, in another guide when it's necessary. So now that we have access to Candlelight Castle, we actually only have access to the side and the moat, but uh, slashing this bush will reveal a staircase down to uh, the underground underneath the castle. So there's a couple Goombas down here. I just uh, jump and then I do a high jump off them, which I think is really cool. I don't know if you could do that in the original, but it's it's neat. I like that they added some additional platforming effects in this in this version. So Candlelight Castle uh, has a lot of guards uh, and we need to get five golden leaves. Some of them are dropped by guards. Some of them are dropped uh, other ways. So first we need to throw a rock at this tree and then kill the crow. And that is our first golden leaf. Now you can uh, continue south and walk around the castle. That's totally an option, uh, but I prefer to go around uh, just to avoid some of the guards because uh, they're just fast and they deal a decent amount of damage. So go ahead and kill this, uh, the sword knight. And now we need to kill the bomb knight. Um, he will peek his head out uh, holding a bomb. Uh, what you want to do is just slash him uh, before he throws the bomb and then walk away from the bomb. So it's just a lot of like slash, walk away, slash, walk away. But after you do it, I think five or six times, uh, he will eventually die. Okay, it's five hits. So now we have our second golden leaf, and it's time to head inside the castle. So we're going to continue south here, then uh, walk one screen west, and then uh, we'll, we'll gain access to the castle. Take care of these guards, just play it safe. I am playing on hero mode, so nothing drops hearts for me, because uh, I'm just a masochist like that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to head into the castle. And this is a little trick, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of this, but... Uh, these items that you're about to see on the screen, they're called Bad Fairies, and if you take out the Magic Powder, this also works in A Link to the Past, you can sprinkle Magic Powder on them, and they have a chance in Link's Awakening to drop a fairy. Uh, it'll turn into a regular good fairy, uh, and then in this game they have a chance to, to turn into it, but in A Link to the Past it'll always be a fairy. So, kill these two guards, we're going to get our third Golden Leaf, drops from the ceiling, and then our next stop is one screen north, and we're going to open the castle gate. This way we can leave uh, very easily once we're done here in a few minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that rupee and then we're gonna move one screen north, kill the spear thrower and then we're gonna kill the sword knight. And then we have a bat over here with one more spear knight. Kill them, all right, and then hop on the switch and that opens the gate outside. This way we can leave uh, and come and go whenever we please much more easily. We don't need to, to use the bridge in the underground cavern anymore. Okay, so we're gonna head up two, two flights of stairs here. Okay, and now the fourth golden leaf is behind this uh, bombable wall, and inside is a sword knight, so just uh, be careful taking him out, but he will drop uh, the other one. Uh, you can bomb the crack on the right as well. I think on normal mode, that guy might drop a fairy or additional bombs or something, but I'm playing on hero mode, so I just chose to ignore him. Uh, it's not necessary. So the fifth golden leaf is guarded by that guy that you just saw. So we're going to go ahead and kill him next. Uh, he he can be quite challenging. Um, it's it's a flail knight. Uh, you saw them in Link to the Past. They're back in this game, um, at least in this case. Uh, but we do need to pick up a bottle and throw it at the door in order to get it open. And now we can challenge this guy. So what I recommend doing is he's going to swing his flail, and once you hear the whooshing sound, uh, wait to hear that five times, and then on the sixth time, he's going to throw it. Uh, so wait to hear it five times, and then just jump to his right, and you should be able to dodge it, just like that. And then you can get one or two hits in on him, and uh, yeah, it would be good. I think he'll die in this next attempt here, maybe one more. Um, I... I did die a lot to this dude, so I tried to really figure out like what his moveset is, um, but it, it's tough. And on hero mode, you know, you don't get any heart drops, so it, it's a challenge. All right, so now that we have five golden leaves, it's time to go pay Richard a visit, finally. Uh, if you've already spoken to him, just head back to, to where you, you know he is. Uh, there are bombs in that pot, and I think on normal mode, there's a fairy on the right pot, or at, least, at the very least some hearts. But now we can uh, drop down and just leave uh, by the castle gate that we opened up before. Very cool. Now we're going to take a slightly different route back to uh, Richard, and uh, he will 
grant us access to the slime key. So he's not actually just gonna straight up give it to us, he's just gonna grant us access to where it is. But that's good enough for us. All right, so you see this little lake to the left of us, that's where we're gonna be headed soon. There's a hard piece in this field. I'm gonna mark it on my map real quick. Somehow I opened this map just before I got to Pothole Field, like just a couple frames, so it didn't actually fill anything in. That's why I kind of paused on the map. I was waiting for it to like etch in uh, the new area, but it never happened. All right, so head into this house here, and then we're going to speak with Richard. Uh, because we didn't speak to him before, he's still going to give us his intro dialogue, and he's going to tell us to go to the castle to get the five leaves. So just keep mashing A and, and skip past all this. I don't, I don't really know what the deal with the frogs is. Um, I assumed it was a play on, like, if you kiss a frog, it becomes a prince. I don't really know. Uh, it's never really explained in the original, and so far playing this game on the Switch, I haven't really figured anything new out. Uh, when it comes to Richard and the frogs. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh, I really like how in this version, uh, his house is like really decorated and it looks like he actually lives here. So really cool. Let's go ahead and push the frog statue over. You're gonna get a staircase into the underground. Uh, this chest on the left that I'm skipping, that is a magic seashell. So if you're collecting those, go ahead and open that up for yourself. All right, so coming back up the stairs, uh, you're just gonna exit the cave. And now we are at Pothole Field. So, there's a lot of bushes, and under most of these bushes are holes. So you gotta be very careful uh, where you navigate, but just follow this path that I'm carving out here, and uh, and you'll be okay. And again, there is a uh, there is a hard piece in the northeast section of this field that you can get to. Uh, you do need to do a little bit of jumping to get over some of these potholes, so just keep that in mind for yourself. All right, we're almost there. Okay, great, and now you're gonna know why we needed the shovel, and it's to dig one hole under this bush near the owl statue and there you go there's the slime key okay so now that we have the slime key we can finally enter the key cavern uh, but for whatever reason the designers of this game decided that we needed to once again go around uh, pothole field in order to actually enter it so once we get the key lift up that rock jump over the hole and then insert the key into this pedestal here on uku uku prairie and that will open the key cavern and then we're just gonna walk around Pothole Field one more time, and then we can get into the dungeon. Okay, so now that it's open, we're gonna walk around Pothole Field. And aside from that hard piece, we never really need to come back here. Um, yeah, walking through grass is pretty slow. So I just like to chop it down. All right, so now we're making our way back over to the lake, and then we are gonna go ahead and jump over these platforms. Eventually, we will get flippers, and we can swim over to that bush, uh, which has a secret seashell, but for now, we just gotta jump on the little islands. I recommend saving your game there in case you haven't already, uh, but now we are ready to enter the key cavern. So, first things first, pick up a pot, throw it at this door, and uh, we're gonna be introduced to a couple new enemies, these little bomb dudes. Uh, you can hit them with your sword, but if you do, they start bouncing around the room, and uh, they will explode after a couple seconds of bouncing around. So I recommend planting a bomb and then uh, letting them walk into that bomb. Now, this is a lot easier said than done. I'm going to waste like five bombs here just trying to get this job done, uh, but it, it can be pretty annoying. So there's one, and I think it's going to take us like three or four more bombs just to get this guy, and I think eventually I just get frustrated, slash him with my sword, so you're going to see what happens anyway. Um, but yeah, so he's just like walking out of blast radius every single time, uh, like a true gentleman would. Um, yeah, it, it's quite frustrating. But playing on hero mode, you can see I'm entering this dungeon with only two hearts. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm just trying to be very cautious and I'm just trying to really take my time. So yeah, I just get frustrated enough and uh, I hit him with my sword and I just call it a day. All right, but defeating all the enemies in that room, we'll drop a chest and this is your first key. Now, I will say, uh, before we get too deep into this dungeon, uh, we're going to come to a room with four locked doors in a minute. Three of those are optional. You do not need to open three of those doors. Um, if you open the door on the right first, the other three rooms become inaccessible until the very, very end of the dungeon. Uh, the second to last room in this dungeon, right before the nightmare, has a key drop, but if you do the rooms in the order that I'm going to show you, in this room here, 
uh, you will it will be an extra key. But if you decided to go to the right first, you have to wait until the very end of the dungeon for when you get that last key uh, in order to open up the other rooms in case you want. Um, yeah. So and if you're you know if you're always trying to get rupees, I recommend doing it in this order because there are several chests uh, with rupees in this dungeon that we are going to get. We're going to 100% this dungeon. So the south room here. Just go ahead and kill all the enemies. If you get too close to those bird enemies uh, that you saw me throw a bomb at, these guys right here, they teleport and throw a shuriken at you. So it's very important that you, uh, you you sort of stay far away from them. But they're easy enough to kill. You just got to knock them into the pit, or you can hit them with two bombs. Um, eventually, we will get an item that allows you to kill them normally. Uh, but I like to get them to teleport to this other side and then toss a bomb next to them Doing so, we'll drop a key onto this moving platform here, this conveyor belt. And now we can proceed to the north room. So hop over the gap there, and then proceed to the north room. Okay. In here, we have a crystal switch, as well as another key. So just kill the Stalthos and the skeleton here. A little dry bones guy. And the key will drop, and we also want to hit the crystal switch. And the reason for that is because we're going to go get... Uh, we're going to open up another chest, and then we are going to get the map as well. So we head back up the stairs. Now we can open this chest here, but we're going to skip that for now, and uh, we're going to get the map. So head into this room to the east, past the slimes. There's two keys and a, and a sword stealth hose here. So be very careful. He can hit you from the top of that platform if you're on the if you're on the bottom, if you're on the blue section. So be very, very careful. Uh, he actually killed me without me even realizing I was getting hit by him. Uh, because he was on top of that platform. Now that we have the, the dungeon map, we can go ahead and proceed back north and we can open up that chest that we made accessible by hitting the crystal switch. Let's do that now. All right, and inside is the stone beak. Again, um, I'm just showing you how to 100% the dungeon. I'm not going to talk to the owl statues, but just in case you're curious how to get certain chests, I still like to show it. We're just going to defeat the slimes in this room, and then we're going to hit the crystal switch one more time. That's uh, very important. It makes a uh, certain section of this dungeon a little bit easier without having to uh, backtrack too much. So use the, the key that we just found and uh, open up this door. That little bird dude is going to fly away. And then we're going to kill the two keys here. We're going to take a hit, unfortunately. And then we're going to walk upstairs. Okay, so in this room, uh, it's best to do this clockwise uh, because you got slimes popping out of the floor and there's a blue tile over here. I'm sure you can guess what's coming. But defeat all the slimes and another key drops. So this place is called Key Cavern. There's a lot of small keys in this dungeon. You actually need four to use in a row. So you're gonna like stock up on keys in this dungeon pretty hard. Uh, so you don't actually have to kill these guys. You just walk past them. Um, and what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna do something um, that you can really only do if you have the information to do it, like if you know what you're supposed to do. Uh, but obviously I'm making a guide, I know what to do. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, a quicker way to do this dungeon uh, with that information. So in this room these are green bomb dudes, and the way you want to uh, deal with these guys is if you hit them once, they will begin a countdown, and then after it goes 3, 2, 1, after 1 they will explode. If they're near each other, they can blow each other up, so you kind of want to try to bat them into each other. Uh, but I recommend taking one at a time and not trying to do too much. Okay. So in this room, we have some slimes and a spear stalphos, and we're going to get a piece of power as well. But there's also a bombable wall in here. So we're going to open up this chest, we're going to get the compass, and we're going to blow open a wall. Now, there is no crack on this side, but later on, we will be able to access this catwalk that's above us on the bottom of your screen. You can hear that, that the wall is hollow, so we're going to bomb that open. But later on, we gain access to this catwalk, and we can see the crack on this side. So that's your hint to do that. But I just prefer to do it now. Like, there's no reason not to. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to not make this tutorial too long. It's going to be upwards of 30 minutes, so it's just easier to do this. All right, so take care of all the bomb guys. Once everything's dead, a key will drop, and now we can proceed. Let's get back through this room. When you get to this next room, the bombs will respawn, but you don't need to kill them. The door is already open. Okay, great. So now that we have the compass, we begin hearing uh, the tone and seeing the compass pop up on the screen whenever there's a key in the room. So keep that in mind. We're going to kill these Stalpas again. Again, this is just optional. We don't really need to do this just yet. Okay. So now we are 
going to get caught by a slime and be disabled. Uh, getting uh, latched onto by a slime means you can't slash your sword, so it's important you just run away. But now we're going to fight the mini-boss of this dungeon, which are the Dodongos. The Dodongos in Link's Awakening are really interesting. Uh, they eat bombs as they move along the floor, but you have to look to see if they are opening their mouths. If they are not opening their mouths and you place a bomb in front of them, they're going to shake their head and they're just going to move away and they're not going to eat it. Uh, so just be very, very careful. You don't want to waste your bombs. Uh, we are going to pick up 10 more in this dungeon, um, so just keep that in mind. But you want to make sure you have at least six coming into this room. You need at least six in order to kill them. It's three each. And if you run out of bombs, you can just use the staircase on the bottom part of the screen to exit. Okay, great. So that's six. And now a teleporter will open up, uh, which we will use later to get some, uh, some final chests. But we want to proceed east. And in this room are the Pegasus boots. Just go ahead and move these blocks and open the chest and get your treasure. All right, we got the Pegasus boots. So in Link's Awakening on Switch, these boots are always equipped on L, so you don't have to uh, navigate to the menu to equip them on uh, X or Y. It's always equipped on L once you get them. All right, great. So what we're gonna do is we're going to open this wall. So this is a bombable wall. Uh, if you get the map, you'll be able to see this. Okay, open that up. And now we have two Spear Style foes here. We're gonna grab this Guardian Acorn, and then we're gonna kill the other Spear Style foes. Um, on hero mode, these pots don't have anything, but uh, on regular, I'm sure they do. We're also going to plant a bomb here to crack open this wall. That's totally optional. That just leads to uh, the room right above it, uh, which we're going to gain access to anyway by just jumping off the ledge. So you want to do a running jump across those two gaps. So just uh, hold L with the boots, and then once you get to the edge, just use the rock's feather to jump the gap. Okay, so... That uh, crack that we just bombed open leads to that room, so again, it, it's just totally optional. Okay, so now that we have, uh, for the most part, cleared out this section of the dungeon, uh, we are now going to go to the west side of, of this part of the dungeon. Okay, so now that we have the Pegasus boots, we can actually kill these enemies uh, before they teleport away. All you gotta do is just line yourself up and run into them, and one sword slash will do it. Which is interesting, because it takes two bomb blasts to kill them, but one running sword dash will kill them as well. Weird. So, uh, once everything's dead in that room, go through the Indiana Jones door, and uh, there's a gold skeleton in here. These guys uh, can slam on top of you, uh, but two sword slashes uh, will, will kill them. We're gonna grab this next guardian acorn. Again, I'm doing this on half a heart, so I'm gonna pick these up whenever I see them. Uh, then we're going to go through this door again. All right, and then in here we have a 10 bomb drop, so that's uh, that's really, really helpful. Uh, in this room, you do not need to kill everything. Uh, I'm going to try to safely navigate this room because, again, I'm on half a heart. Um, but, yeah, we're going to be able to do that by just uh, throwing some bombs in that general uh, vicinity over there and uh, killing the stealth host at the very least. For some reason, the bomb guy just likes to evade everything once he senses that there is another bomb uh, over there. So, yeah, he's a real gentleman. So I'm going to try to plant one and bait him into walking into it. But it's, it's just it's just tough going, you know what I mean? It's, it's just real tough. He's going to avoid this one. Oh, no, he doesn't actually. Okay, great. Cool. So now that we've gotten that, sorry that took so long. This is the catwalk I was talking about. If you walk to the east, you'll see the cracked wall uh, after the compass. So that, that's your hint to do that. But we already knew that, so I just skipped it. Uh, we're going to get another 50 rupees. Now we're going to head back to the dungeon entrance using the teleporter. And what's really cool is now that we have the Pegasus shoes, we can uh, get the last two chests, one of which has 300 rupees in it. So rupees are really, really important in this game. You have to buy the bow and arrow uh, for like 900 something rupees. I think it's like 980. So collecting rupees is really, really important. Um, I'm saying that even though I haven't done it yet in this version uh, as of this recording, but I've played the DX version a couple weeks ago and, and it costs a lot of rupees to get the bow. You can steal it, but I'd rather not. So just keep collecting rupees as much as you can. There's a lot of rupees in dungeons. That's where you're gonna get the bulk of it. So this first room that we didn't go into before, you want to dash across the bridge, try to stay towards the middle so you don't get blown off. And then you can run directly into that purple thing to kill it. Uh, or you can uh, just wait for it to stop and then uh, slash it with your sword and you'll kill it as well. 
uh, but you can also get a key in that room, which we do need. So now that we have the Pegasus shoes, we can break open those crystals and kill that red slime. And because we hit the crystal switch earlier in the dungeon, we are able to navigate this room more easily since the orange blocks are down. So that's why I hit the crystal switch before. Very important. Otherwise, you'd have to navigate uh, the treacherous first room with the two bomb enemies and the Stalfos, and it's just not good. But now that we've killed the red slime, we kill the two Stalfos, and this chest has 300 rupees in it. So we're going to grab the Guardian Acorn, and now we're going to grab 300 rupees. And we have four small keys plus the Nightmare Key, so it's time to finish this dungeon. Uh, the major purpose here was to get uh, the four keys, because now we need to open four key blocks in a row. All right, almost died right there. That that was almost terrible. Okay, we're going to kill this Stalfos real quick. All right, and the bomb guy's playing nice, so we're just going to move around him. All right, so hop back on the teleporter, and now we're going to go to the, the larger section of the dungeon. But uh, now we are going to open these key blocks that we kept seeing before. So we're going to open this first one here. We're going to walk one screen to the north. We're going to open up this one. Walk to the east. Open this one. Walk south and open this one, and then go down the stairs. So this red block we have to charge into using the Pegasus boots, and he will he will fall, and then you want to do a running jump there. Uh, the Piranha Plant goes back into the pipe. You can kill it if you like, I just ignore it. Uh, for this room, again, just run into these guys. You just want to line yourself up, uh, but once all three are dead, the door will open. In this next room, this is the final room of the dungeon. If you kill all of the keys in this room, a key will drop. And if you uh, chose to go east in that four door room in the beginning of the dungeon, uh, this is the key you will need in order to access the other three rooms. So just keep that in mind. So this key for us is extra. Now I took a death on this boss, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and transition to my kill attempt. Uh, he's not too hard, but he can deal a decent amount of damage if you're not careful. This boss is Giant Slime. In order to get him to enter the boss arena, you need to bonk into any wall by running into it. That will bounce him off the ceiling. So from here, you want to run into his eye and then hit whatever eye becomes vulnerable until he looks like this. And then you want to run through him and split him in two. And now this is the boss for real. There's two versions. When he slams on the ground, you can notice his shadow getting bigger. You want to jump using the rock's feather, otherwise you will get stunned, and chances are the second one is dropping right behind the first one. It's actually going to happen to me in a minute. Uh, so you want to be very careful, make sure that you jump uh, to avoid that. So yeah, see so you can see I messed up my timing. I wound up getting hit and losing some life. Um, but yeah, so after a bunch of slashes for each, uh, they will die, and once you're down to one, it becomes considerably easier. Uh, but you do just want to watch for the shadows as they're getting bigger. That means that they're dropping. And then just carefully navigate the room and hit them in the eye whenever you have an opportunity. And that's it. That is Giant Slime, and that is the Key Cavern. Go ahead and collect your heart container, and then move into the next room to get your next instrument of the sirens, which is the bell. And that about does it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on Switch, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new videos go live. If you like this content a whole lot, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below. You guys can find me on Twitter, at SJCage, and I'm also on twitch.tv slash sweetjohnnycage, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Alright, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.